This is the Natural History Museum. Welcome to NHM Live. In a couple of minutes, you'll be meeting one of our scientists. This is your chance to ask some questions directly. We look forward to hearing from you. Let's find out who our scientist is today. My name's Emma Bernard, and I'm curator of fossil fish at the Natural History Museum. So I'm responsible for over 100,000 specimens that stretch back over 500 million years. So I look after many different groups of fish, some of which are now extinct. Things like the placoderms, the jawless fishes, and also look after some of the recent fish that are still around today. So things like sharks, rays, and some of the bony fish that you find in the oceans. Part of my job involves working with researchers from all around the world who want to come and visit our collections. So I help them with their research, which is something I find really fascinating, getting to learn um, what other people are working on. So recently I've been at a quarry in Oxford and here I've been picking up some sediment and looking at very, very small sharks that lived about 165 million years ago. So as a child I was fascinated by fossils, the fact that all these animals lived hundreds of millions of years ago and I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a paleontologist and work at the Natural History Museum. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of NHM Live, filmed here at the Natural History Museum. My name is Alistair, I'm going to be standing in for my colleague Camilla today, and we're going to be exploring the wonderful world of sharks. Really amazing animals, we're going to be finding out all about their diversity, what makes them such wonderful creatures. If you've got any questions for us, do send them in during the show and we'll do, we'll do our best to answer as many of them as we can. Uh, joining me today, I'm uh, here with Emma, and uh, as you saw there, Emma, thank you very much for coming today. You, you work with sharks, uh, fossil sharks particularly, is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, so to get us started, how many species of sharks are there in the world? Uh, so there's about 500 different species of sharks um, that are around today, and as we explore more of the oceans and more of the world, we're probably likely to find out more, and that's true for both fossil sharks and recent sharks. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to look at a range of sharks today. Now, when I think of sharks, the first image that comes into my head is the big jaws, the big great white shark with a sharp, the sharp, the really sharp teeth. Um, and it's quite a frightening image. A lot of people say, you know, they don't want to go in the water and your know, sharks will attack them. Are sharks the threat that a lot of us sort of perceive them to be? Uh, the media certainly makes them, makes them out to be, but um, they're not at all. Um, to put in perspective, you're more likely to die from taking a selfie or falling off the toilet seat than you are from a shark bite. OK, well, there you go. If you're anyone taking selfies uh, while watching this, that's more dangerous than swimming with sharks. Um, so, yeah, we mentioned there, uh, I said that the, the big sharks are often the ones we think of. Now, the great white shark is perhaps one of the most iconic, recognisable yes. ones. Now, can you tell us a little bit about it? What, what's it really like? And, and you brought along a specimen as well that we can look at. Yeah, so we've got part of a jaw of a great white shark here. Um, and so great whites actually evolved from a, a small ancestor about 55 million years ago. And over many millions of years, they slowly evolved into the modern day great white shark shark um, about 6.5 million years ago. And that was when they developed these serrated edges here on their teeth. So these teeth are perfect for biting into big fleshy things, things like seals, uh, dolphins, um, and things like that. Um, so great whites. I'm just going to feel that there. Yeah. They are really sharp, actually. It feels like the edge of a, like a steak knife. Yeah. Perfect, of course, for cutting. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, they're great. So great whites um, can grow to about four and a half, maybe five metres in length, um, with the females generally being slightly larger than the males. Right. Um, they've got a great shaped body plan, so a bit like a torpedo, and their skin is basically dermal dentical, very small teeth that make them uh, perfect for swimming through the water. That's interesting. So the, this, if they're... That, you say the skin's got that kind of teeth-like structure. Is that why um, they've got that sandpapery texture? I mean, I know a lot of people might have associated the skin of a shark with sandpaper. Is that the denticles you talk about? Yeah, exactly. So um, if you go one way over a shark, it's quite smooth. But if you go in reverse, so mm. basically to from the tail to the head, it's quite rough. And that's because um, of the way the dermal denticles all point, making it very streamlined. Excellent. OK, well, uh, do send in your questions, guys, uh, for Emma. We're going to be looking at a range of sharks today. So that was the great white, but we've got a few other ones here. Let's, yep. let's have a look at some of them in turn, because um, they, they do look quite peculiar. So let's start with this one, first of all, and, uh, and just in front of me here. Now, this is a lot smaller than the great whites. You were saying they were four or five metres long. This is a much smaller one. What is this one? So this one is the cookie cutter shark, um, and it lives quite deep in the oceans, um, like the Atlantic Ocean. And it's got its name because of how it actually feeds. So the cookie cutter shark will swim up to something um, like a fish um, or a dolphin, seal, something like that, and it will attach onto the, 
the animal and basically do like a small turn and remove a circular chunk of flesh. So it's in the same way that if you cut a cookie out of dough, you, you sort of twist it and pull it away. Exactly, yeah. So it's quite a sneaky little shark. <laughs> so it is. And um, we've, we had an image up there showing the wound from it on, on, on the back of an animal. Can, and it was just one sort of nasty looking cut. Can they get several... Can, and, uh, can an animal be attacked by several little sharks and actually have lots of wounds? Yeah, they can. And um, so several cookie cutters can go in um, over years and take um, remove small um, chunks as well. And the cookie cutter won't always kill the prey. It will just go in, take its bite, swim off and leave the animal um, alone. <laughs> OK, well, we've got a question coming in from Nadia on Facebook. Uh, thank you for your question, Nadia. Nadia is asking, are there any sharks in UK waters? Uh, they are. So there's about 40 different species or so round about the coast of the UK. However, mostly we will never come in contact with them because they live quite far out. So it's generally only going to be through fishing, uh, perhaps like that. Right. Like so if that. you're paddling in the North Sea, you're OK. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, OK, keep your questions coming, guys. Let's move on to the next one then. Now, this one at the front really strange looking animal. Tell us about this one. Uh, yeah, so there's actually, um, so this is the goblin shark and we're still, scientists are still learning an awful lot about this shark because it, again it lives quite deep in the oceans up to about a thousand metres in depth. Um, it's often um, found off the coast of Japan and as you can see there it's got a, basically a very big nose almost, <laughs> yeah. a long sort of protrusion um, and like um, all sharks these, this is full of special electrical receptors uh, called ampullae of Lorenzini. So basically um, it's like a sixth sense. So these sharks can detect movements, electrical movements from um, animals in the oceans. Um, so it can swim up. And the way that this shark feeds, um, it's a bit like something from Alien. The jaws actually go straight out, extend, grab a hold onto um, a fish or a squid or something, and will pull it back inside its jaw. Incredible. So it's this protruding jaw that comes out, grabs it and, and sucks it back in. Yeah. Amazing. Um, now, you mentioned that's in deep water. That sense, that sixth sense that you mentioned, I guess, is that an adaptation for living in, in the deep? That it's, where it's dark, its eyes probably aren't going to see very much. So it's using this sixth sense, as you called it, to kind of see around it. Yeah, it can be. But also um, other sharks, like the hammerhead shark, for example, um, and rays as, um, as well, um, they actually bury down to find their prey um, on the bottom of the, the water, the mm -hmm. seabed. Um, and they can detect prey underneath um, the sediment as well, as, again, with these um, electrical receptors. Excellent. I wish we could have that sense sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It could be really useful. Uh, excellent. So that's the goblin shark, very peculiar looking one. Now from that, we've got another one that looks totally different yes. again. I mean, really showing that diversity in shape. Uh, tell us about this one. Yeah, so this is called the Wobbegon shark, and this is found um, off the north coast of, of Australia and Indonesia. The Wobbegon. The Wobbegon, yes. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like a stereotypical shark, because as you can see from the, some of the images of it, it's got these sort of weird tassels that sort of stick out, and that's because it lives in the coral reefs and um, on the seabed as well. And it, so basically it's camouflaged. And what this shark will do is it will sit quite happily um, on the coral reef and wait for um, a fish or a small crab to perhaps swim past. And then it will dart out, grab a hold of it, and it will enjoy its meal. Fantastic. It's um, a di different hunting strategy to um, the other sharks that are more sort of predatory and, and swimming around. Exactly, hunting yeah. for the food. Really uh, unusual one there. Uh, so we've got another question in from, uh, this is from Giles on Facebook. Uh, he's asking, with regards to the cookie cutter shark, uh, evolutionary speaking, and perhaps with my tongue firmly in my cheek, would this be to ensure a fresh supply of food? So the, the, the way that it's going up and, and biting uh, off chunks from a, a big living animal. Yeah, I guess it's just a different way of feeding. Um, you don't necessarily have to feed a, um, eat a whole animal. Um, and it can be quite sort of sneaky, just sort of going in, taking a small chunk and sort of going away. And it does this also relatively quickly. Um, as well so yeah it's probably it is a good good advantage of doing that excellent okay and uh, finally the last specimen we've got on the table here is this amazing one here now this is um what's this called again this is the mako yes this is a mako shark and it's got a, f a reputation behind it doesn't it yeah so it's um, reported as being one of the fastest sharks um, that's around today so it can swim um, up to speeds of about 40 miles per hour it's actually quite difficult 40 miles an hour yes 40 wow. miles an hour so yeah <laughs> super quick and you can see there from the image of the mako shark that it's got an amazing torpedo shaped uh, body so um, excellent um, streamlining um, but it's also quite difficult to measure the speed um, off sharks because generally they don't swim in a straight line <laughs> yeah of course that 40 miles is an, you're not going to outswim that that's an incredible no. <laughs> speed uh, and i'm guessing you were talking about that streamlined body and those the um the denticles you called them on the skin the way that it cut that helps streamline it and make it cut through the water 
yeah. stuck a bullet. And people have also done research into shark skin, um, swimsuit companies, um, in order to um, enhance swimwear um, for like the Olympics and make uh, their swimmers go faster. And there is a slight advantage by doing that. Oh, there you go. So sharks are better <laughs> swimmers than we are. Um, now, I've got another question. This is from Charlotte on Facebook. Uh, Charlotte's asking, how many threatened sharks are there in the world and what is the biggest threat to them? Oh, gosh. Uh, there's actually... Sharks, unfortunately, are um, under severe threat. Um, so we mentioned earlier about some shark attacks. Uh, so to put it into perspective, generally, on average, there's about five to ten people a year that are killed by sharks. However, humans, which are probably the biggest threat to sharks, humans kill between 70 and 100 million sharks every year. Wow. Um, and often that is um, to do with shark fins. So um, it can be like a status symbol shark fin soup. Um, however, it's actually tasteless. And what um, chefs actually do is flavour the soup with chicken stock. So when you're having shark fin soup, it you tastes might like chicken. Tastes like chicken. It's it's so tragic because you know th these poor animals are being are being hunted and used in this as an ingredient in the soup. It doesn't really taste like anything. And if it tastes like chicken anyway, what what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Um, and also to do with overfishing as well. Often they're caught as bycatch um, during fishing. Um, so, and also like some of the shark nets and the deterrents. So um, yeah, sharks actually have got much more to be scared of from us and then, not the other way we around. Have of them. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Excellent. Well, those are some wonderful examples, Emma, of, of living sharks. Thank you very much for, for bringing them along. Now, a little bit earlier in the week, my colleague Camilla went with Emma behind the scenes to look at something significantly larger that's no longer with us. Let's see how they got on. So we know that the biggest sharks around today are the whale sharks, and they can get up to about 10 to 12 metres in length, I believe, which is huge. But what's the biggest shark to ever have lived? So the biggest shark that's ever lived is actually a fossil one, and it's called Otodus megalodon. And it could grow up to about 15, nearly 20 metres in size. Well, how long ago did megalodon live? So megalodon lived about 23 million years ago and eventually went extinct about 3.6 million years ago. So relatively recently, geologically speaking. Yeah. And I believe we have one megalodon tooth here, which looks yep. incredible. Let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, so here we've got um, one tooth from a megalodon shark and um, as you can see it's about the size as, um, of my hand and some of the teeth do get even bigger. So we think megalodon could grow to about 15, 20 metres in size and that's about three times the size of a modern day great white shark which we think of as being quite big. Um, but if I compare the megalodon tooth to a great white tooth here. Oh wow. And you <laughs> can see, yeah, there's a very big difference in size. So some of the biggest great whites are about five and a half, maybe six metres in size. So Megalodon, as I said, was three times the size of a modern day great white. And there are some similarities there. You can see the serrated edges on, on both of the teeth. So we know that great whites are apex predators of the ocean today. Is it safe to say that megalodons were the, the top oceanic predators back in their day? Yeah, definitely. So they were definitely the top of the food chain. Um, and if you're something that's 15, 20 metres in size, you need to eat an awful lot of foods. And with those shaped teeth, as you've said, they look very similar to a great white shark. So we actually know that megalodon was eating things like whales and dolphins because we found some of the bite marks on whale and dolphin bones. <laughs> Hey, welcome back everyone. If you've just joined us, I'm here with Emma Bernard and we're looking at sharks today. We've uh, just been looking at one of the biggest sharks that ever lived there, the Megalodon. If you've got any questions for Emma during the show, please just send them in. We'll do our best to get through as many of them as we can. So Emma, we're just looking there in the clip at uh, Megalodon, which was the biggest shark that, that ever lived. That was about 23 million years ago, is that right? Yeah. Um, that's obviously an incredibly ancient animal, but sharks as a, as a group actually go much, much older than that, much further back. Can you tell us a little bit about sort of where, they, where they came from and when they first appeared? Yeah, so sharks evolved about 420 million years ago. So that's about 200 that's million incredible. years before dinosaurs. Yeah. So they've been around um, on the earth for a very long time and I think it's um, absolutely fascinating that they're still around today. And that's one of the things I really like about that because you can compare the fossil sharks to modern day sharks as well. And have they changed significantly in the time? Um, they have changed um, a lot during that time. And generally speaking, they've sort of maintained a similar body plan. And uh, you can find them all around the world in different parts, different parts of the oceans as well. Excellent. Well, today you've brought along um, a really amazing specimen for us. So we'll look at it now. It's one of the oldest examples of a shark specimen in, in the world. Is that right? Yeah, so this is the oldest one that we've got in the collection. And uh, this is um, under the visualizer here. We've got a tooth from a shark called uh, Clododus. 
And this one is about 400 million years old. And was 400 found... million? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so just if I put my finger beside it, you can sort of get the size of um, scale. So it's just a fragment of that tooth. But what I've also done is brought along another tooth here. Um, so this is um, again from a shark called the same, same shark, Clododus, but it's a little bit younger. But here you can actually see the teeth um, really well. Excellent. And it's and is it the tooth? Uh, the teeth, the the main thing that we find in these really ancient sharks, is that the remains we typically are coming across? Um, in general, so one of the most uh, common fossils that you're probably likely to find are actually shark's teeth. Um, and that's because um, one shark um, over its lifetime can produce thousands of teeth. So um, here I've got a jar um, of teeth, and this was collected on one afternoon doing field work. One afternoon's work? Yes. You were very productive that day. <laughs> yeah, it was very busy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is about the same number of teeth one shark will have in its lifetime. Right. So do you want to take any guesses? Oh, um, <laughs> I would say that that's definitely a few thousand. I don't know, maybe three, four thousand teeth, maybe? It's a bit more than that, actually, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we, we ask you guys, what, if you've got any ideas about how many... How many shark teeth are in this jar? Send in your, your guesses and, uh, and then we'll see a bit later on how many it actually is, because I'm assuming you know that you know the exact number, do you? Yes, I do. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, so extinct sharks, uh, we saw the megalodon earlier. We've got some of these ancient remains you looked at here. There are some very peculiar looking sharks from the past, aren't there? Can you tell us about one in particular that looks really bizarre? Yes, yeah, so one of my favourite, um, sort of, I guess, odd looking fossil sharks is a shark called Stethacanthus. And this lived about 370 million years ago. And um, it's often referred to as the iron and board shark, <laughs> um, unfortunately, because it's got a, a strange uh, protrusion on its back. Right. Um, and it's basically covered in lots and lots of tiny, really hard, um, thick uh, dermal denticles, uh, a bit like a sort of a brush or something, I guess. And it's also got the same um, feature on top of its head. Um, and these features are generally only associated with male sharks. So we think it's got something to do with attracting mates. OK. That's, and I, that, it's, I'm interested in how, how, do you, how do you know that when you go from sort of that, that evidence that you see in the fossil to then saying, we think it might be attracting mates. What, how do you make that connection? Uh, so with these protrusions, and we can also find it on other sharks as well, it's, they're only actually associated with male sharks. So the males, um, their reproductive or organ is called claspers, and that's underneath the shark at the back. Um, so we can tell that they're males, and we've only really ever found them with male sharks. So we're assuming that it's probably something you know to do with attracting mates. Excellent. OK, well, let's uh, speaking on teeth, we've had a few guesses come through about how many might be in the All jar. Right. So uh, thank you very much, guys, for your guesses. So I'll just uh, read some of these out. We've got um, from Periscope, we've got uh, Chris Wobblington guesses 3,000 uh, and Kath knew 12,500. Oh, getting warmer. Um, <laughs> though, so that, yeah, a bit more. We've got uh, Diane, on, Diane on Facebook saying 6,400. Uh, Nadia says 12,000. So... That's uh, a good range of guesses there. Who, who's closest? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a couple of very close guesses. So there's about 15,000 teeth in this jar. 15,000. OK, so yeah. those of you that are around the 12,000 mark, well yeah. done. Well that's, done. Uh, that's pretty good. So that's so in a shark's lifetime, typical shark lifetime, we're talking 15,000 teeth. Yeah, 15, potentially even up to like 30, 40,000 teeth. Um, and that's because sharks are always replacing their teeth. They've got what we sometimes call conveyor belt system. So generally every one to two weeks, depending on what the shark's eating, it will replace its entire front row um, of teeth. So over the course of a lifetime, um, you're producing 15, 30,000 teeth. Um, and because teeth are very hard and dense, they're more likely to fossilise. So that's one of the reasons why we find so many shark's teeth. I was going to say, because shark, if shark teeth fossils are so common, it, it must be because throughout the life of every single shark, they're just constantly losing them all the time. Yeah. Fantastic. So um, speaking about teeth, um, one of the things, we looked at the variety of different kinds of sharks in the, in the first segment, but I'm really curious to know about the sort of diversity within teeth, because I'm assuming that the teeth are just as varied as the, uh, the animals themselves. Um, can you talk about the different sorts of teeth that you get in sharks? Yes, yeah, so there's lots of different ones. So we've already seen like from the great white shark, the stereotypical triangular serrated um, tooth that's very good for biting into fleshy things. Um, here I'm going to show you a modern day Port Jackson shark. Um, right. So you can see the teeth at the front, um, all the teeth are pointing inwards and these are quite um, sharp. So if you just put your finger there and pull back. Oh yes. 
can really feel that. Yeah, so basically once you've gone in the mouth, you're not you're getting not back getting out. out. Yeah. <laughs> so these are really good at grasping, um, so they can um, catch on to small slippery fish. Mm -hmm. However, if you have a look at the teeth further back, um, they look quite different. So they're long and flat and obviously not sharp at all. So um, this shark can um, modify what it eats depending on what's available. So it can also eat things like crabs and uh, shellfish. So these are crushing dentition. So they crack open the shell to get to the soft fleshy parts inside. So is that is this th this is a bit like I guess us having you know our incisors and our canines for for biting and tearing, and then we've got our molars for crushing and chewing. Is this? sort of the same idea with the sharks then? Yeah, it's quite similar. So they've got different teeth performing different functions. And again, that's one of the reasons why sharks are very successful because um, they live in all different types um, of water, some including um, river systems as well. Uh, but also they can vary their diet depending on what's available. And this uh, sort of function you can also see in fossil sharks. So, so I've got one, one here. here. Yeah. Uh, so this is a shark called Hybodus, and it lived about 160 million years ago. And this particular specimen is from Lyme Regis down in Dorset. So here we've actually got some of the um, cartilage preserved of the um, skull of this shark. And we've got these um, teeth at the front that have got the sharp grasping dentition. Mm -hmm. And then as we move further back along the teeth, the rows of teeth, we can see that they get longer and flatter, so um, crushing dentition. It's incredible and really well preserved as well mm. that, uh, that you can see. And again, that because of the hard the hardness of the material, it preserves really well. Yes. Now you mentioned as well that the cartilage was here as well. Is that is that this this stuff around here? Yeah. So this is all cartilage. So sharks belong to a group of fish called known as the cartilaginous fishes, mm -hmm. and that's because their skeleton is made of cartilage. So it's similar to material to our ears and our noses, yeah. um, as well. That doesn't tend to fossilize very well uh, because it's quite soft. But under special circumstances, uh, we do get some of that soft tissue preserved. Okay. I was going to ask if there are yeah because it's softer material. Is it unusual for that to fossilize? And do we have much of that in the in the collections? We do have some of that in the collections. Obviously, we've got thousands and thousands of teeth, and um, some of which we've got here. Uh, but we do sometimes get their body fossils and the, their skeletons uh, preserved. Yeah. So and um, we've got a shark um, in the collection called a todis, um, which came from Morocco, and we've basically got the entire vertebral column um, of that. So that's like the spine going all the way. Exactly. All the way back, yeah. yeah. And uh, the size of and um, the that each vertebra is about the size of my hand. So it's quite a big shark, about 10 metres in size, and it's actually the ancestor to Megalodon. Okay. So in order to get the cartilage preserved, when the shark dies, if it falls into the bottom of the water and gets covered in sand, different sediment very quickly, and in a noxic environment, so there's no oxygen for even bacteria to come in and bite all the soft and um, fleshy parts. And um, if we are very lucky over millions of years, it can become fossilised. Oh, incredible. And do we have, is there anywhere a, a complete skeleton of a shark? Does that exist in a museum or is it bits and pieces? Uh, we do have a few in the collections and one of my favourite specimens actually in the collection is a shark called Wodnika and uh, this is one of the only known complete specimens of this shark um, in the world um, and it lived about um, 240 million years ago and this particular specimen is from Durham, so right here in the UK. Okay. Um, it's got the crushing dentition um, and we've got everything preserved there. So we've got all the soft tissue. You can see the outline of the fin spines. And um, so I think it's a really amazing uh, specimen that we've got the complete shark preserved. And that's, that's your favourite one? It's one of my favourites, yeah. Never mind the great white. <laughs> no. uh, interesting, you mentioned that was from the UK and I, I wanted to ask you before we finish, is there any good places that if people want to go and kind of find their own shark teeth or if they're really lucky, some of the, the cartilage that you said, is there good places to go for that? Yeah, so there's a number of different places around about the UK. So um, the Yorkshire coast, for example, is quite good and the Dorset coast as well, down places like Lyme Regis, um, and also down in some of the chalk deposits near Kent. Um, but what I would advise for people to do is get in touch with um, some of the perhaps local geological groups, because very often they will um, do like actual tours and fossil collecting trips. And it's much better if you're quite new at this, that you go together as a group and they'll be able to monitor some of the dangers, especially with like cliff falls, you hear a lot about um, today of as course. well. Yeah, you've got to be careful around those, those areas. Yeah. Excellent, okay, we've got a, a question that's come in just now from uh, Julie on Facebook. Uh, how far north do sharks swim? Oh, um, so actually, so as I mentioned earlier, so sharks actually exploit lots of different parts of the water and we have um, the, one of the ones is called the Greenland shark actually. And um, so as the name suggests, it's found very um, high north yep. and um, it's actually one of the oldest um, vertebrates that's alive today. How old do they get? So there's a recent study done uh, that aged some of the proteins um, within the eye lens of this shark and we found out that this shark lived to 400 years old. 
400. Yes. <laughs> Four, one individual for 400 years. Yep. That's incredible. Yep. How, how, how does it do that? Do, do we have any idea how it can get to such an old age? Um, I think it's just to do with its uh, metabolism and um, what it eats and basically just yeah, the living environment. But that's something that scientists are actually trying to um, uncover more about to see if there's anything that we can learn from how this shark lives its life that might be it might help us. It sounds like if it takes it slow and easy, it will live a long time. <laughs> so we're all working too hard. That's the problem. <laughs> Excellent. Another question. This is uh, this is from Bick on Periscope uh, asking: Do the crushing teeth wear down? So I'm, uh, I'm guessing on the specimens we're looking at, do they get worn with all the crushing? Action? Yeah, they do. So if. Um, some, in some teeth, you can see that it's very, very worn down. But because the teeth are being replaced every sort of couple of weeks, um, the, the teeth will just naturally sort of roll forward and then fall off. Um, and that's one of the reasons why they do this tooth replacement, is to make sure that they've got really nice, fully functioning teeth. Yeah. I wish I could do that, actually. You think you could... You wouldn't have to worry about going to the dentist I or know. anything. You could just <laughs> eat all the chocolate and sweets you want, and uh, when the tooth's worn out, it's just going to fall out. Just get out. another one. Fresh yep. new one coming in. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, another question, uh, this is another one from Charlotte on Facebook. Um, what is the scientific family name uh, for the sharks and where do they evolve from? So I guess, what, what's the name of, of, of sharks? The scientific uh, name so sharks? they're sort of called the El Elasmobranchs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, yeah, so there's uh, three families um, of cartilaginous fish. Uh, so you have the sharks, rays, and another group called chimero chimeroids okay. um, as well. And basically their um, skeletons are made of cartilage. And then from that, um, they then start to... Um, go down into the various different families. So the sharks, sort of is there out. an animal before the sharks that we know that they've kind of evolved from? Has that got a name that we know? So um, that's still under a little bit of debate. Uh, so um, going back even further, so there's a bit of discussion about whether some sharks evolved from um, things like placoderms. So these are very heavily armoured um, fish. Right. Um, so if you've heard of a dunculoceros, for example, that's quite... I haven't a, heard of that, I've got to say. But. Uh, so it was a very big um, bony um, placoderm um, fish that lived about uh, four, over about 400 million years ago. So there's some people who think that um, they might have evolved from placoderms. And there's a num number of other early fish groups as well. So that's still actually under a bit of discussion. Bit of research. So there's some, something there for anyone to go and research. If there is. There's always interested. something new to learn. Yes. Excellent. OK, I've got one more uh, question just here. This is um, from uh, uh, Kath New on Periscope. Uh, news, there's news reports of great whites off Canada. Is that, is that unusual? Um, I think I've not heard of that one, um, but yeah, it's quite unusual because generally they're sort of like warm tropical waters. Um, so okay. it could be. Excellent. But okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Emma, for, for chatting to us today and bringing along some of these amazing specimens. Thank you guys as well for all your questions. If you've got uh, any more that you'd like to ask, Emma is going to hop online. So do, do send them in and we'll do our best to get through some of those before we, we finish up. But thank you so much for coming and we'll see you next time. Yeah.